Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, 12 Ways to Boost Restaurant Sales During the Holidays and the Rest of the Year, too. The first thing we'll do is we'll introduce ourselves. We'll give you a quick little introduction to WAND if you're not familiar with us. And then we're going to talk about maximizing your holiday season. And obviously, we're already well into the holiday season. We've, we're past Black Friday. We're going to give you a lot of information about ways that you can increase sales and improve customer engagement, improve the look and feel of the restaurant, and use technology to help you do these things. And uh, very excited about the content. The webinar is going to be less than the hour that we have allocated unless you have a lot of questions. And if you do have questions, you can enter them right into the GoToWebinar interface. And uh, if we do have a tremendously large number of questions, we'll, we'll answer them offline if we run to the end of the hour. But we're going to start on time and end on time. That's our mantra. And, um, and here we go. Again, thanks for joining us. This is going to be fun. So I'll introduce myself first. I'm Chuck Gaiman. I'm VP of Product Management here at Wand Corporation. I've been in the tech business a long time, and my favorite holiday food is gingerbread. Hey, and good morning, everybody. My name is Jason Bates. I'm a product analyst here at Wand. Uh, I've been in the tech industry for a little bit more than a decade now, uh, and my favorite holiday food is fudge because I think you, you can't go wrong with chocolate. Excellent, Jason. Thank you. And uh, I just just a quick little bit of information about Juan. No big commercial, but we're a hundred percent restaurant. We're a technology company. We focus exclusively on QSR and fast casual restaurants. We develop digital menu boards, point of sale systems, and back office solutions for QSR and fast casual, specifically multi-unit restaurant concepts. And we've got a terrific a bunch of uh, customers and partners, and, and we're going to roll into the webinar and give you some great information that will help you improve your holiday sales. So the first area that we're going to talk about is improving the look and feel of your restaurant. And I'm going to turn it over to Jason to give you some fantastic uh, ideas. Right. Well, thanks, Chuck. Um, you know, definitely one of the biggest things you can do this holiday season is make your restaurant more inviting to the customers as they pass by. A lot of the brands that we work with have mall locations, have locations near major shopping areas, in major public areas. And one of the biggest things you can do to improve your business is simply draw more customers in. So we're going to take a look at a couple of ways that we can draw more attention to the restaurant, we can make it feel warmer and inviting, and generally just attract a larger customer base for you. One of the first things that you can do, and it's relatively easy to do, is adding promotional displays in your restaurants. Um, you know, obviously we focus on digital menu technology here, so we understand the value of that promotional material. And really, if you can spice that up a little bit with some holiday content to get people in the mood, to get them excited about you embracing the holidays like they are as they're out at the mall shopping, um, that's definitely going to be a big win for you. And once again, this is a, a pretty easy add to the restaurant with not a large investment and not a lot of time required to get it done. You know, one of the things we see being very successful with our brands is the installation of uh, television displays in the dining area. This is just a little bit of an extra engagement for your customers as they're, they're eating their meals. It's going to hold them there longer. It's going to invite people into the restaurant to uh, uh, order a quick snack as they're out on the fly, kick their feet up and relax for a couple of minutes, and really uh, pull people in with, again, some more engaging content. You know, and this one probably even goes without saying, but we're going to say it anyways. Improving lighting in a restaurant can vastly change the look and feel of a restaurant. That can be anything from putting up holiday lights, Christmas lights, things like that, even to things at like upgrading the lighting in your restaurant, putting in new fixtures, putting in higher quality bulbs like LED and compact fluorescent bulbs. Chuck's going to talk about some of the other benefits of doing that a little bit later on. But lighting is one of those things that really can change how your restaurant feels going from a, uh, you know, a little darker, not so inviting place to a nice, clean, warm, inviting space that really draws people in and makes them want to come into your restaurant to learn more about you. 
video walls are something that we see having great success in the QSR market right now. Um, this can be anything from a couple of displays playing promotional content to something like our customer Boudin Bakery here out in San Francisco who's going, gone with a four display video wall cycling through really what are a, a lot of beautiful products. These are enticing, they draw people's eyes in, and they're going to generate interest in, uh, in your restaurant as people walk by. One of the cool things that we've been seeing brands doing lately is doing some custom messaging on their soda dispensers. Uh, this is kind of an extension of the thinking that any real estate you have in your restaurant is real estate for promotion, and this is a great area where you know you have your customer's attention, you know they're looking exactly where you want them to. So this is a great, great place to add a little bit of branding, add a little bit of brand message, and really engage your customer even while they're in the restaurant. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is nutritional information. As I'm sure you all know, the caloric requirements from the FDA are coming in the relatively near future. We're just a little bit more than a year away from those going into effect. And really, it's important to understand how these are going to affect your restaurant, how your consumers are going to react, and how you can leverage this requirement to your advantage. You know, one of the first things that we've seen, because we know that states like New York and California have been requiring caloric values on menus for quite a while, we've also seen several brands embracing caloric values on their menus early on. And what they're reporting back, um, now several years in in some cases, is that there's really no real effect on consumer behavior. The average checks have not changed, the average order value has not changed. Customers really aren't even straying away from those high calorie items because if they're made attractive looking enough, if they're appealing enough to the customer, they're going to order them because that, that's what they want to eat. There's actually even some brands that are finding great success in caloric labeling. They flip the conversation from trying to find the lowest caloric value menu items and keeping those calories low to embracing the fact that their meals are a little bit higher on the calorie count, but they're delicious. Customers love them, and they really want to continue ordering them, even with those higher caloric values. One really important thing to understand is that your consumers are already beginning to seek out this information. They're going into restaurants looking for caloric values. The expectation has been set by several brands already. And if you lag too far behind on this, what you may start to see is a little bit of customer disappointment that they can't readily obtain that information. So make sure you're ahead of the curve. Make sure you're giving your consumers what they want and embracing that upcoming requirement. And again, just a very quick reminder that those requirements are a le less than a year away. Today, this is an optional thing, but if we were to do this webinar this time next year, we would be talking about how you make sure that you have everything in place and you're ready to go for the upcoming requirements. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about briefly is the addition of digital menu boards into a restaurant. Digital menu boards carry a lot of benefits for restaurant operators. This is an area of the uh, market that we know very well, in which we have a lot of experience and have really seen a lot of great results from digital menu boards. One of the things we see across the board with the brands that we work with is that they will create an immediate sales lift. You are adding a very enticing piece of media into your restaurant. You're really drawing your customers' eyes to the places where you want them to be looking. And as such, you can really direct how customers order and what they order on a much deeper level than with standard static menu boards. Digital menu boards are also going to increase operational efficiency by allowing you to do things like change prices on the fly, update content to uh, satisfy local conditions on the fly, and really generate the ability for you to make sure that the media and content that you're showing to your customers is as relevant as it possibly can be. They're also going to give you the ability to direct consumer behavior and incite impulse purchases. I have a lot of great stories about walking into brands that we work with, looking at those promotional boards in their dining room and changing my order just like that because what's in front of me there on this display looks so appetizing, it looks so good. I actually I want to jump in there and give it a try. And this is obviously a great benefit to our partners and to anybody using digital menu boards because that allows you to direct consumer behavior and up your average checks. And finally, it's going to focus your customer's attention. This goes back to the operational efficiency in allowing you to not only direct customers where you want their eyes to be, but also to expedite your ordering process by educating your customers, making ordering easier, and focusing their attention where you want it to be, and getting them through the line quicker so that during that hot, busy holiday season when you have lines out the door, you're serving your customers as quickly as you possibly can. 
Now, when we talk at, while we're on the topic of menus here, it's really important to talk about having a good menu strategy, be that static menus, be that digital menus, however you present that information to your customers. A solid strategy on how to do that is very important, and there's several layers of this strategy that can help you improve the experience in your restaurant. One of the first things we see is that it is very important to group like menu items on your menus. Um, anything from Elf's favorite food groups all the way up to having combos near each other, having salads, drinks, sides, appetizers, whatever it is that you may serve, having those menus easily identifiable and located by your customer's eyes so that they can order quickly and easily. Long, menu, long ordering processes confuse customers, they frustrate customers, and they also frustrate everybody in the line behind them as people struggle to make up their mind on what they're going to order. Now one of the neat things that we've seen coming out in the QSR world lately is the use of what we like to refer to as digital takeovers. And what a digital takeover is, is what you see on the two center screens in our image here in the uh, presentation, where instead of standard menu content or just a one screen promotional display, we're now spanning promotional content across multiple displays. Now the reason that this is attractive to customers is it's very eye-catching, it's different, it's out of the ordinary, and it's going to draw their attention to those promotional items that you really want to highlight while still keeping their attention on the menu boards and allowing them to order in the process. One of the best things you can do with your menus is ensure that descriptions and menu information is simple and easy to read. Once again, just like grouping items and keeping things simple, you really want to make sure that your customers can identify the information that they want to see quickly and make that order quickly based on that first instinct of what they want to eat. Um, this is going to give you an increased speed of service, it's going to give you a better ordering process for your customers, and if you really understand on a, on a very deep level the information that your customers want to know about the menu items, you're going to have greater customer satisfaction when they're done with the ordering process. In that same vein, it's very important, especially for uh, brands where you have a multi-step or multi-stage ordering process, to educate your customer on what that process looks like. Make sure that they know as they move through a serving line or as they move through the queue that there are going to be steps to their process in ordering and they need to be ready to go with the information for their order. And finally, and I'm sure many of you, especially those of you in the marketing world, are fully aware of this, but it, it definitely does not go without saying catchphrases are great. Things like make mine a double, supersize it, upsize it, biggie size it, whatever it may be, those are all very intentional catchphrases that stick with a customer, endear them to your brand, engage them with your brand, and also give you the opportunity to upsell and create larger average checks. Now I'm going to pass it back over to Chuck. He's going to talk a little bit more about the engagement piece and how you can interact directly with your customers to improve some of your business over the holiday season here. Thanks, Jason. That was fantastic information. And um, So let's talk about ways that you can really engage your customer in the restaurant. So the first option is to offer catering. I mean, obviously, this is kind of a no-brainer. Uh, in the holiday season, people are having parties, they're having get-togethers, they're having lunches in the office. Catering is a fantastic thing to promote. You can put a sign like this up right in, on your website, on the front, front page of your website, and you can also put signs at the line at the store and in the entrance of the store to promote the idea of catering. It's a fantastic option. It's a big win, obviously, all year round, but even more so in the holiday season. And, and the flip side of that is to host holiday parties and tastings in your restaurant. Your restaurant may not serve champagne, as this beautiful image we have here depicts, but uh, there's a very good chance that you could put on a nice little party in the, in the dining room of your restaurant, no matter how large or small it is, and, uh, and, and upsell a lot of, of fun uh, items to your loyal customers. Add festive decorations of whatever sort appeals to you and your customer demographics, um, whether it's tinsel, whether it's lights, whether it's uh, you know just uh, some festive pine cones or what what have you. Um, 
it's uh, it's a terrific thing to do. You really want to want to get the holiday spirit going on in in the restaurant, and um, and it helps to brighten things up. As Jason had described before, that that's a terrific thing. It, it breaks the norm, and it'll make people feel good. <clears throat> Integrate music. I, I, a lot of concepts have integrated music sources. You're probably in, you know, many of you on the webinar are probably already playing holiday music. If you're not, it's a very, very good thing to do. Again, like the restaurant may be more crowded than uh, it normally is, and it may take a little tiny bit longer for people to be served, in which case, like having fun holiday music playing, you might turn the volume up a tiny bit. That could help. Um, will keep people entertained while they're waiting. And and add a seasonal LTO. I mean, this Pizza Hut box is pretty much what I want to find under my Christmas tree on uh, on the day. But um, even if you're not uh, going to be giving somebody um, a couple of pizzas and a giant cookie, um, it's a terrific option to have a seasonal LTO. And you're probably already doing this also. But um, if not, there's still time to to do an ad hoc version of something like this. And be active on social media. So if you're having events, if you're having fundraisers for local charities, if, you're, if you've got a catering business going on, um, talk about it, tweet it, um, post it on Facebook. These, these are powerful ways to engage customers outside of the store and get them into the store. Loyalty is also a fantastic way to notify people about what is happening in the restaurant. And if you are not using email and mobile apps for loyalty, you really ought to consider this. Obviously, it's probably a little bit too late to, to start doing this now for this holiday season, but you should immediately start collecting people's email addresses and talk and look for a mobile strategy. If you're not doing a mobile app, that takes some time and planning and probably some expense. Um, email is a very, very affordable way to, to get rolling with loyalty. And, and clearly, if you have a loyalty program already and you're giving out punch cards, many, many studies have shown that digital loyalty is going to increase engagement as much as 70%. The, the use of the punch card is really old-fashioned and, and doesn't really give you the traction you can achieve with a digital program. Offer holiday promotions. So, you know, loyalty is all about customers who are already very engaged with your brand, and you want to take every opportunity to get them to engage even more and spend more. And it's, it's much easier to do that than to get somebody to become engaged. Um, so a new, a new prospect to become engaged and enter the loyalty program. So this is a great example, one for me, one for you. I mean, that is something that is going to work and it's going to encourage people to come to the store. And, and even if they don't have somebody to buy a drink for, it's actually going to make them come in and get a drink for themselves anyway. So it's a win-win all the way around. And now gamification is something that's been talked about for a long time, especially in the mobile and digital world, but it's really happening for restaurants now. Uh, in, over the last couple of months, there have been some really exciting games that concepts have uh, launched that are really having an impact. I mean, you know, there, there's nothing better than having a, a millennial, let's say, um, you know, playing a game for two hours in the morning uh, to, to get a, uh, a prize to spend at lunch. That, that is a win for the loyalty program. It's not so great for the millennial boss at work, but it's terrific for your restaurant. Sustainability is something that works all year round, and um, Jason alluded to some of the ideas here, energy efficient technology. So Jason mentioned LED lights. They're very, very bright. They give, a, give you a terrific look in the restaurant. They also save money because they consume less energy. And, um, and, that, and that's also a win for the environment and 
and people are starting to look for these things too. It's kind of like the, the, the health conscious consumer is also going to be the green conscious consumer. So, so it's an awareness issue that people are going to begin to, to look for. Recyclable packaging is another one. Um, as opposed to plastic plates and, you know, and utensils and uh, clamshells are made out of styrofoam potentially, the paper packaging is something that people appreciate. They appreciate you kind of going the extra mile even though the cost may not be anymore um, to use the recyclable materials. And engage nonprofit partners. So um, I actually, um, you know, was at a fundraiser for a nonprofit in a quick serve restaurant just this week. It was fantastic. They were there. But even beyond that sort of thing, a fundraiser, you can also have nonprofit sustainability partners who will come and take, take waste. Um, Starbucks was giving their used coffee grounds from the espresso machines to, um, to local gardens and, and other groups um, years and years ago, and that's a, it's a great strategy. So if you've got waste that might be useful to a recycler, Look for a nonprofit in your local community who could take advantage of that and turn it into a win-win for everybody. And it's something that, that again, that green conscious consumers are going to love you for. And you know, hippies are are about green and they're about love. And um, you know, if you've got to tie into that, it's it's almost for sure a winner with all generations. So. Um, so, you know, have it stand out. Maybe you're going to play the Grateful Dead in the restaurant. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of different, or, or Dave Matthews Band, perhaps. Um, <laughs> although they might be offended if I called them hippies. But, um, but have fun with it. So back down to business, leverage menu psychology. So this is incredibly uh, near and dear to our hearts here at WAN because we are in the digital menu business and we've studied this extensively and we've collected a lot of data from our customers about what works and doesn't work. And we've seen the sales uplifts for correctly designed and deployed menu boards. So um, what you want to do is, I mean, price anchoring is something that has been established for years. Good, better, best. You see it on, on internet shopping. You see it in catalogs. You see it when you walk into a big box retailer. Um, so you want to anchor the prices for the product putting them in the correct order on the menu board with the correct options, such as how special combo one through three here for $5.99. And that's going to add perceived value and help the customer choose the one that makes the most money for your restaurant. Highlight higher margin items to make them stand out. So my eyes are going to immediately gra gravitate toward Tom Tom turkey and Cha Cha chicken salad because they're a different color. And those are the items that, frankly, we want you to buy. I mean, if you're coming in for specifically for a Edo sandwich, we're not going to win you over. But if you're not sure what you're going to order, we're going to get you with Tom Tom. Use price differences to drive customers to higher margin items. So again, this is, um, this is part of the anchoring. So you're either, you know, you're either going to pick the one in the middle or you're, if you're value oriented, you're going to pick the lower priced one, but that may well be the higher margin one, the one with the fewer ingredients or the specific ingredients that make us more money. So again, it's all about the positioning on the menu. And promo items should be in the upper right hand corner because Large companies and institutions have studied behavior in terms of vision, and, and for a long time, everyone has known that the upper right-hand corner of a screen is where people look first. And so if you've got that soda up there, and, and even more to the point, if it has bubbles in it that are moving, or if it's subtly moving towards the customer, as, as we like to do on our digital menu boards, that is going to sell that item. They're gonna, you're going to get that combo sale because that's up there in the upper right-hand corner. 
and then engage with the community. I think we've mentioned this a few times. Promote fresh local items, though. This is something, again, it's that healthy thing. Uh, you know, I was at a QSR this week, and, you know, their bags talk about farmers and how much they love them, and that is a terrific thing to do. And if you're talking about local farmers, you know, there's a, there's a burger company out there that gets potatoes from all around the country, and they always specifically call out the farmer that the, they come from, the actual farm, and that people love that. Engage in events. So uh, I, I don't know where the Santa Claus race is, and I'm not sure I'd participate in that because it looks like you'd get really hot and sweaty wearing a Santa Claus outfit in a race, but, uh, but it does look like a lot of fun to watch. And if your restaurant is out there, maybe you know, giving out some, some food or a dessert at the finish line, that's a huge win for you. Support local charities. I mentioned this before, but you know, if you can have a charity come in and serve food in your restaurant, you can, you can give leftover food to the charity. Depending on what type of charities, you can simply raise money for them. And it's, it's very well appreciated. And it's, it's as good as any advertising, if not better. And engage local artisans. So, so many restaurants have done this, and you basically, you know, photographers, uh, painters, sculptors, put up their work in your restaurant, give them attribution. Um, I've seen some concepts actually even selling the art on behalf of the uh, artist or, or giving out their, their business cards at the espresso bar. It's a cool thing to do, and it, it again, spruces up the restaurants and, and gives people some, an exciting reason to come in because it's changing on a regular basis. So let's talk about ways that technology can help you accomplish some of these goals that we've talked about. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason again. Great. Good stuff, Chuck. Thank you. Um, so when we talk about how technology can help you, there are several different levels, again, on which you can uh, leverage technology to not only increase your sales, but improve your ability to understand your customers. And again, this is not going to be pres prescriptive for everybody, but you should find at least a few good points in here that will help you uh, advance your technological capabilities to improve the way in which you do business. So first we can talk about mobilizing your POS. And what we mean by mobilizing is doing things like integrating mobile ordering into your POS system. A lot of brands out there, uh, including Juan today, are offering mobile ordering solutions. And the reason for that is, is they, they create a massive uptick, uptick in ordering. Across the board, we see on average more than 25% uptick in sales just with adding that mobile ordering capability. You know, it's time to start thinking about tablet-based POS systems as well. Those large, clunky, energy-consuming, hard-to-maintain, expensive registers are kind of going into the dinosaur age. Now, tablets are lightweight, they're quick and easy to replace, they can be configured on the fly, and they are multi-purpose as well. They can give you a lot of expanded capability, like line-busting opportunities, the ability for a shift manager or general manager not to have to run into the back office to check metrics on the fly through a back office solution that only works on a PC, um, and really can increase your operations as well as engage your guests a little bit better if you think about doing things like adding them into kiosk stations in the restaurant, viewing stations or promotional stations, either in the ordering queue or even at, on the tabletop, um, and really using those to engage your customers as well as improve your operational efficiency. And finally, think about looking at mobile applications that allow you to control uh, the technology in your restaurants. Digital menu boards is something that we can control today with our mobile applications. We can also uh, uh, change prices and content on the fly and see back, back office metrics, which gives your managers the ability on the fly to understand how the business is operating. Are they set up correctly for that busy lunch shift that's coming in in the holiday rush? Do they need to let people go? Hopefully bring more people in because you're that busy. What do the sales look like? And is the content correct? Make sure that you have that mobile technology, again, to save that trip into the back office where the manager is out of commission for five to 10 minutes. Keep them on the floor doing the job that you're paying them to do. Now, one of the things, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are aware that this technology is coming out, but we feel it is really going to be an important piece of technology, is contactless payments. 
Contactless payments are simply a point of, of, of payment where the customer does not need to swipe a card, they do not need to pass it to the cashier, they don't even need to actually have a card with them with a lot of the new mobile technologies. One of the things we see, a lot of studies are proving this out already, is that contactless payments are processed much more quickly than traditional payment forms. I'm sure every one of you on the webinar today has stood behind somebody who's stood in line and wrote a check to pay for a meal or to pay for their groceries. It's a long, drawn-out process. It sl slows your speed of service. It frustrates the customers in the queue. And really, it just drags things down. Contactless payments are as quick as tapping your phone to a device you're often done. This is also giving consumers what they want. In a recent survey by Google, 54% of respondents said they would be more likely to frequent a brand that offered contactless payments over not. And what that means is that the younger generational generations, Generation X, the millennials, are favoring technology-minded companies. They're favoring companies that offer those technologies that they're seeking out. Contactless payments also increase security. They take a little bit of the risk off of you as the retailer because you're no longer doing the processing in a lot of those cases. Those are being processed through third parties who take on a lot of that responsibility that removes infrastructure for you and again gives you a little added layer of security as you're introducing these technologies. And finally, as we mentioned before, it's going to attract technology-minded demographics as a whole. People are looking for restaurants nowadays that are embracing technology, that are leveraging to serve them better, and are leveraging technology to give them better service, better experiences. Uh, we saw several brands pop up over the last couple of years who are going as far as automating ordering processes, automating food delivery, and really these brands are seeing great success as a whole in doing, this, doing what they're doing. Even though that initial investment is a little bit higher for them, the returns are even greater. Now, one of the things that we at WAN really appreciate is the use of what we like to call business intelligence. And essentially, business intelligence is levering, leveraging data to help you make business decisions, using data-driven decision-making to understand not only your consumer, but your processes and your costs to, lower, to increase your bottom line and make you more money. Using business metrics is a really great tool in operating your restaurant, in understanding on a year over year, month over month, even day over day and week over week uh, basis, how your costs relate to each other, uh, uh, how much money you're spending where, understanding where your performance metrics are. And really those key performance indicators are going to give you great insight into changes that can be made in your business that even as a great business person, you may not see just on the surface layer. It's also going to reduce your overhead. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, with our mobile application, uh, managers can see in real time just how much money is coming in the doors and how much money they're spending on labor and food and can make decisions on the fly to become more efficient. Now, we all know that 10-year general manager with the restaurant that can make those decisions without a system, but those guys are hard to find. Generally, a GM is going to be in the business for a couple of years, and they don't have those years and years of experience to help them recognize those situations. That's where business intelligence and technology can really lend you a hand, because now even your GM that's been in the position for six months has the same level of intelligence as the guy who's been doing it for 10 years. It also allows you to harvest data. Now, this can be used in almost endless formats. There's dozens of ways to take aggregate data from systems, either at the brand level, at the franchise level, or even at the single restaurant level, to more deeply understand how your business operates, where your key revenue comes from, and how you can increase that revenue. And finally, like I mentioned a couple of times already, it's going to allow you to identify opportunities that at the surface level, even as a great business person, you may not recognize. Um, you know, one of my favorite stories here uh, with the image there on the right is the story of how Velcro came into existence. Um, long story short, a guy was wandering through a field in Montana, and as he wandered through the field, he got burrs caught all up and down his corduroy pants. And what most of us would look at as, as an annoyance, he saw it as that unseen opportunity to invent the hook and latch system that is now used across the world and has made him untold millions of dollars. This may not relate directly to technology, but it's a great example of where if you can shift your thinking based on the data that's in front of you, you can really uh, harness a lot of great opportunities to increase your revenue. 
So I'm going to pass it back to Chuck here, and he's going to give you a quick recap of some of the things we've talked about here, and then we'll jump into a Q&A session here before the end. If you haven't done so already, we've got a couple of great questions coming in, but feel free to use the questions tab in the GoToWebinar uh, Go to control panel. It's labeled questions there, and if you just press that little plus button to it, you can type anything to us you want. So, so who knew Santa was into business intelligence? Okay, that's, that's, you know, that's my takeaway from that. That, that naughty and nice list has come a long way. That's operational efficiency. <laughs> Absolutely. Right he needs it, doesn't he? Um, so we talked about a, a wide range of subjects this morning. Uh, the first one was redesign and reimagine, re-image your restaurant. Lighting, color schemes, a little bit of paint, cleanliness is key. You know, your restaurant is busy, keep it incredibly clean. You might need a few extra people. It's awesome. Nutritional info. People are looking for that info. They want to make healthy choices. As Jason said, they might not make healthy choices even though they, you know, they see the calorie information and that's okay. It's their decision. They've got the info. They feel good about it. Digital menu boards sell. They help you guide the customer to the products that you want to sell them and help them find items that they're going to love that are going to increase their engagement and keep them coming back to the restaurant. Simplify. This is, this is a key mantra for us. You know, it, it goes to operational efficiency and the speed of service, which in QSR and fast casual, those are, those are top of mind issues. And simplifying the menu is the number one way that you're going to achieve that. Engage the customer, absolutely key. Embrace the holidays, it's fun. People want to have fun in the restaurant. QSR and fast casual is very often about fun and let's, let's embrace it and embrace the holidays to achieve it. Loyalty programs, loyalty programs have come a long way. If you're still using punch cards, go digital and start engaging your customers on a new level. Make them offers, get them back into the restaurant. <coughs> Sustainability, green, can also be fun, and it is also very important to many, many people, and it's a good thing for your restaurant to promote. Menu psychology, this is absolutely critical. It goes hand in hand with the digital menu boards, but even if you're still using static menu boards, it's, it's going to help you. Um, you should look at the menu. A lot, of, a lot of concepts haven't changed their menu layout for a long, long time and uh, it's time to take a fresh look. And, and engage with the community um, in, in many of the ways that we discussed, both from the standpoint of um, supporting local businesses, farmers, and also um, charitable organizations and institutions. Let technology help you. Mobilize the POS, many, many benefits to be had here. Contactless payments are going to be key for security, but more importantly for keeping and improving the speed of service at the counter and even in the drive through Business intelligence is going to give you unparalleled insight into the operations of your restaurant that are going to help you continuously improve and profit. And, and so one final note would be that, um, you know, you, you may well be able to take advantage of tax breaks if you make capital investments between now and the end of the year. You'd want to consult with your finance people and or uh, your accountant to determine whether this is going to have a positive impact for you, but we've got a lot of customers and partners who who have really capitalized on this and it's made a big difference. And, and now, it, you know, as we come down to the last few weeks of the year, now's the time to make this happen if you can. So with that, let's jump into some Q&A here. And I see that we've already uh, received a couple of good questions. So, um, so here's a great one. The first one is, what what one thing should I do now to prepare for the end of 
December holiday rush to boost my sales the most? That's a good one. You want to take that, Jason? Yeah, right. And that's actually a great question because a lot of the stuff that we talked about here really varies. Everything from really simple to really long-term planned uh, investments and changes. Um, if I was going to pick a couple off the list, I would say definitely the investment in your, the look and feel of your restaurant, improving that lighting, improving the overall environment, atmosphere, and experience for your customers is huge. Um, you know. Things like technology investments, things like business intelligence investments, those are much longer term. Those are things you're going to want to plan and try to leverage for next year. But the great news about those is those will benefit you year round. So really focus on things, you know, I would say definitely lighting is huge. A clean, nice looking, inviting environment is probably the number one thing that draws me to a restaurant. I can't tell you how many times I've walked through a mall food court and made my decision not because of the food that I like or dislike, but because the place that I would normally go looks kind of dingy and dirty. There's trays stacked up on the uh, counter or uh, you know dust all over the place. Things like that as a consumer drive me away. Um, you know, even something as simple as a fresh coat of paint can really go a long day, and that's a couple of day win that you ought to be able to, to pull off before the end of the year. And I think again those decorations as well. Again, that's a one-day thing. You can probably get a couple of folks in uh, on a little bit of, of time in, in the afternoon to decorate the restaurant, and it's going to just increase the look and feel of the restaurant that much more. Cool. Thank you, Jason. That's fantastic. So um, the next question is actually sort of the flip side of this, and this is like, what what should I focus on next year? And and so, you know, from my standpoint, I would say that the the loyalty thing would be the number one thing I would I would get off the ground, and you can start investigating it now, and you can launch it pretty quickly um, in the beginning of the year. That's something that is going to pay off next holiday season and throughout the year. So that's that would be my advice. Um, let's see, do we have any other questions here? Oh wow, we do. Super. Um, what should I be doing with tablets? I get a lot of questions about them. Well, and, and that's, a, that's a pretty broad question. Um, I, you know, I think by the first part of my answer would be that it's really going to depend on, on your own circumstances and your own brand. We'd love to chat with you a little bit about you know, what those circumstances are and some of the goals you'd like to achieve. I think in a general sense, though, um, engaging your customers with those tablets is a great first step. Um, you know, I know McDonald's now offers games on tablets in the restaurant, and whenever I take my kids into one of their restaurants, they see all of the other kids in there playing on a tablet, playing a game, having fun and enjoying themselves while they're eating their meals. They want to go to McDonald's that much more the next time. So it's, it's really a great way to endear yourself to, uh, to your consumers, if not your consumers, their kids for sure, um, and, and up your business that much more because I know when we drive by a McDonald's now, I get hit up every time to go inside. Um, and a lot of other brands are having very similar successes. Second layer of that would probably be to do some promotional engagements, uh, find applications that allow you to play promotional content on that tablet while they're not in use, get some of your brand messaging and engagement materials and media up on those tablets. That's going to give you a lot of benefit, just like the digital menu boards will, uh, with that kind of same focus and approach. That's great, Jason. We didn't really talk about that in the webinar, actually, the, game, the, game, the gaming on the tablets. That's a really easy thing to do. Tablets are very inexpensive. You can go down and buy one for 60 bucks and make games available, and uh, that, that's a terrific idea. Um, and I know my kids are hooked on those games, too. Great. So let's see. Do we have another one here? We've got... Paul from Florida here who's asking, well, he's saying, tell me more about these tax breaks. So do you have anything more to add to that? Great, yeah. And, you know, I'm going to be intentionally kind of vague here. My, my apologies because it is, again, going to depend on your particular circumstances. But in a lot of cases, a capital expenditure into your business can be used as a tax write-off. That's going to be a benefit to you, and that's going to be another way to mitigate some of those costs and just increase the curve of the ROI on those technologies, on those improvements to your restaurant. Because the end of the tax year is coming up here very soon, you still have plenty of time to start looking into and implementing those changes. So we think it's a great idea to get rolling with that now and see how and, and implement as much of that as you can this year to reap the advantages here in a few months when you do your taxes. Fantastic. Well, it looks like we've answered everybody's questions. That's pretty good. Um, it was a lot of information. 
And uh, what I want to do now is just give you our contact information. Jason Bates, he's a product analyst here at Want. His favorite movie is Elf, and uh, there's his email address. I, on the other hand, my favorite movie is It's a Wonderful Life. There's my email address. If you have any questions, if you want to engage with us on any of these topics, please don't hesitate to reach out. I do love It's a Wonderful Life, but I find Uncle Billy incredibly annoying. <laughs> so uh, Nobody should be that happy, right? <laughs> and so, um, no, he, he caused all the problems for Jimmy Stewart in the movie. <laughs> so, um, so thanks for joining us today. Um, we've got more webinars upcoming in 2016. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's already almost 2016. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the content, and please do reach out if you have any, any additional questions or comments. And um, have a happy holiday season from the team here at WANT. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for joining us.